Welcome to the Stop Dieting Podcast, hosted by best-selling, award-winning, author and renowned weight loss expert, David Medansky. If you struggle to lose weight or you've lost weight and gained it back, you'll want to listen each week. Each week, you will learn tips for healthy weight loss without going on a diet, without having to follow an exercise program, without counting calories, or having to purchase special meals or products. The Stop Dieting Podcast is more than just about healthy and sustainable weight loss. You will also learn how you can have more energy, feel better, get rid of brain fog, and improve your overall health. Stay tuned for another informative and insightful episode. And if you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe and share this with your friends. Hi, this is David Medansky. Welcome to another episode of Stop Dieting. Today, our special guest is Nicole Harvick. Welcome, Nicole. Hi, David. How are you? I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me as your guest. Oh, thank you for taking the time uh, to share your knowledge with our audience. So tell us a little bit about your, your background and what you do to help you. Well, it's, it's interesting. I've, I've got a background of real estate and lending, but I took a just a leap of faith and I decided I kind of wanted to move into a more spiritual area. I just felt that was my calling. So I would like to say I'm an expert in forgiveness. And unfortunately, that happened through um, going through a very ugly divorce, which is a very common catalyst. But it took me on quite a journey, you know, about a, I'm going to say about a decade of a journey that really helped me to understand the importance of forgiving it under help it help me understand compassion and why that's so important, not only in our everyday life with other people, but literally for our health. So that's a little bit of my story, but I'm just so excited to be here to be able to share this today. Oh, uh, thank you. I understand about uh, going through nasty divorce, being a former divorce lawyer. Yeah, I, I kind of feel it's like, a, I'm sure you've seen some ugly stuff. Unfortunately, yes. Uh, you're also a healer and you have a Reiki master's degree and several other things. Can you tell the audience a little bit about how you help people heal? I would love to. Um, as I was going through my divorce, I, I became sick and I had so many negative emotions in my body. There was fear, which is paralyzing, um, anxiety, which just, it creates so much turmoil in your body. And I knew that just talking to therapists, it wasn't doing me any good because what I was doing is repeating the same story over and over and over. And I'd go to groups that were supposed to help me, but it was more like, you know, they just kind of encourage you to, they encourage the anger at times. Well, you have every right to be angry. You, you know, I'm like, okay, this isn't helping me. And I got to a point where I couldn't eat. I couldn't sleep. My hair started falling out and I just started scratching, just, just intense scratching. I'm like, I, I have to heal myself. I have to take it upon myself to figure out what in the world is going on. So that started me on a journey of healing modalities. And I know some people call them woo-woo, but if you research Reiki, if you research sound healing, anything you research, it's actually ancient wisdom, especially the sound healing. You know, they say that the pyramids were actually built as sound chambers because it resonates off the walls and enters your body. And people don't understand that. And I always tell them, it's just like hearing an old song. When you hear a song, you know, you can feel that resonance within you. It can create sadness. It can create happiness. So I learned how to do all those things and really started working on myself. And I, I really grew and I came a long way, but I, I still couldn't quite get rid of, of something that was lingering, a lingering anger. And I realized it was forgiveness. I hadn't practiced forgiveness. So would and you say that forgiveness is important for maintaining first getting good health and then maintaining good health? Absolutely. It absolutely is. It anger creates so many negative emotions in your body. Sometimes you, you're not even aware that you have that going on because you've had it for so long until you realize that you're forgiving for yourself, not for that other person. And by no means are you condoning their act. It's just your time to not walk around with their anger or the anger that they've cast upon you. And so getting rid of the anger Sorry about that, folks. We had a little technical difficulties over Nicole's back with us. 
continue on, Nicole, with what you were saying about anger and forgiveness? Well, one of the things I noticed is that I had so much anger in me. I, I, I would just erupt at any little thing. And I think when people understand that you can replace that anger with kindness, you can replace that anger with love. And those emotions, feeling those emotions and coming from a heart space is so beneficial to your health. And, you know, I watched my mother um, who had told me for many, many years, she had forgiven my father when they were going through a divorce and she really hadn't because what I heard her say about five days before she passed away is, as you know, he slept with all my friends. And I don't know if that's true or not, but I know that she took that to her grave. And so it was at that point that I realized that's not going to happen to me. Wow. I know that when I was growing up, my dad uh, told me that if you're angry at someone, it doesn't affect them because they don't know you're angry. It affects you because you're carrying all that negative emotion in you. He says, so you need to leave, you know, learn to, you know, let it go basically. And that's so true. And when you realize that, that, you're not doing it for them because you're waiting maybe for an apology or an acknowledgement from them that they're sorry or they didn't mean to do it. It's more than likely never going to come. So you're going to wait a lifetime and never hear it. But in the meantime, you're suffering and they're, they're free to live their life while you've got this pain and agony. So your dad was absolutely right. He was way before his time on that one. So it, it's easy to say, oh, you need to forgive someone or from the movie Frozen, let it go. However, what's one tip uh, you can give the audience on how they can start to forgive themselves and also forgive others? You know, I think for me is, is when I realized a divorce always takes two people, whether you like to admit that or not. But as I reflected on what I had gone through and what I'd learned, um, I looked back and realized that I didn't, I, I did the best I could at that moment with, with the knowledge that I had. And I never did anything um, trying to be mean or trying to be vindictive. I really did everything with, with what I thought at the time was right. So when I came to that conclusion, it was a lot easier for me to say, you know what, you did your best. You, you did your best. You would, would you do it differently now? Yeah but I did my best at the time. That's interesting. I know that uh, Darren Hardy, I'd like to listen to his Darren Daly. And one thing he was saying um, just recently is that if there's a situation that you don't like or want, look at yourself and see what have you contributed to that condition or that situation. So I guess with forgiveness, people need to look inside and also figure out what they have contributed to their situation. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, and, and, you know, when I also looked at it is, what did you learn? What did you learn from that? What would you do different now? It, it became, it became like an epiphany to me. It's like, learn from this. You know, you don't have to remember the pain, but remember the lesson and remember to do it differently or, or, you know, next time be a little kinder with your words or your actions. And that, that was one of those that kind of punches you in the gut when you look at yourself and you're like, Oh, dang, I was part of that. Exactly. I know one of the things I used to advocate for, for clients or at least, you know, attempt to teach them was best revenge is to be happy. <laughs> and and, and that, that seemed to, to resonate with some people. Some didn't want to move on for whatever reason. Um, what's your feeling about, uh, you know, moving on and, and being happy? I think moving on is the best thing you can do for yourself. And it's also a form of self-love and self-care. What good are you doing yourself or anyone? If you're not pouring love into yourself, you can't pour it into anyone else. And like I said before, there's a very good chance you're never going to get an apology. So why would you want to live like that? Move on, realize it's a, it's a life lesson. Keep going. Don't look back. And just keep moving forward and being happy is the best one of the best gifts you can give yourself what other advice can you give the audience about forgiveness and, and maintaining good health um, by being a forgiving person 
Well, one, some people don't realize that when you carry those negative feelings inside of yourself, what you're doing is you're creating illness inside of your body. And one thing that I've learned is anything that's going to linger inside of you at some point has to manifest on the outside and anxiety that you that you have inside of you that can lead to high blood pressure um, anger that you have for me it resulted in skin rashes and what when i i have guides that often advise me and i talk to and they told me what was happening is i was uncomfortable in my own skin because I hadn't forgiven myself. But there's so many things, there's so many health issues that happen to someone that is not living in forgiveness of themselves or others. And, you know, anxiety causes you not to breathe as deeply as we should. We're very shallow breathers. And the first thing I learned is when I started feeling that was to breathe deeply, hold it in and blow it out. And it kind of took me out of that fight or flight modality and it calmed me down and it released the anxiety so there's so many health issues that you're going to see if you don't practice forgiveness uh, what are some of the other health issues that manifest because of uh, the stress and anxiety that people keep inside of them you know i've i've heard of people actually having heart attacks um, I think when I talked about my mom you know not forgiving she ended up with stage four breast cancer and that is a very, you know, because of the cheating, that's a very feminine disease. And I feel that that's where it manifested. And she kept saying, I can heal myself, I can heal myself. And we do have the power to heal ourselves, just as when we cut our finger, it heals, or when you have a bruise, your body takes care of it. But you can't heal a, something like a cancer when you have all that darkness inside of you. And see, she never released those feelings. She never released any of the anger towards my dad, the hate towards him, and actually hate towards herself for putting up with it for so many years. So I, I really feel that keeping something like that inside of you could result in some very serious diseases. Would you agree that uh, maybe journaling or writing is a good way to uh, release some of that uh, negativity? That's a beautiful outlet because you sometimes you go into almost like um, a meditation when you write. And I've actually had people, I myself do it, but I've had people tell me that they can kind of automatic write, you know, just bring it in from their higher self. And when they read what they've written, um, they look at it and not realizing some of the emotions they put on that paper or some of the feelings that they put on that paper. So you can do that or you can just make a list of, OK, here's 10 things I want to do. I want to wake up in gratitude. I want to give someone a compliment. I want to drink water for my body today. There's just so many ways that that you can do and you can do 10 things a day. You know, just small things. And it, it, after 21 days, it becomes a habit. So all these things are going to come so naturally. You know, go to the gym for half an hour. If you don't have a gym, take a walk. Um, deep breathing. We have so many areas that we can heal ourselves. And, and it doesn't cost money. And it really doesn't take that much time either. No, I agree with you. I mean, a lot of times when I'm feeling a little stressed or anxious, uh, I'll go for a hike. We're fortunate because mm -hmm. we live a couple miles from the White Tank Mountain Head. So I can go for a hike or go for a walk, like you said. Just do some physical activity. You don't necessarily need to drive to a gym and, and do a heavy workout. I know that physical activity and exercise is a great way to relieve stress and anxiety. It so really is. Just being in nature itself, actually being around, you know, trees and birds, you're, you're going to feel better automatically that you're out there enjoying nature. And when you do that, I mean, that's just like automatic healing. It's crazy. When you start the walk, you might feel like, a, you know, I, why am I doing this? But by the time you're finished, you're like, oh, my gosh, I feel so much better. So I think that's a great way, David. Well, good. Uh, um... You're also a very spiritual person. Can you talk a little bit about that and how it helps other people? You know, I am. And I just came to a point in my life where a lot of things didn't make sense to me. Um, the way we treated one another, the way we judge, 
um, so many things that we've kind of been conditioned to do through ego. And so I started asking a lot of questions. I, you know, you'd hear things that it just didn't make sense to me. So I kind of started on a spiritual journey of just learning about myself. And that really started with meditation and started with yoga because meditation and it, it's not always easy to do. You have to start with quieting your mind. They call it a monkey mind because our mind just chatters all the time. And I thought, I, ca I can't do this. How am I going to do this? But I took my breathing to a different level that calmed me down. So I started by just laying there and listening to what the universe had to tell me. And it was pretty amazing. And that's kind of what started me on this this going inside myself, because I really feel that we look outside of ourselves for every experience, for knowledge. Often we believe our, we believe others before we'll believe ourselves. And we've, we've come equipped to heal ourselves, um, to love ourselves. There's so many modalities that we come equipped with and we're always looking for the next big thing or where the grass is greener. So through meditation and through yoga, which is it's, you know, it's a quiet time, but you're also stretching your body, feeling your body. You're also feeling where there might be pain or sadness. Your body will tell you everything. And so that's really what kind of helped me step into spirituality and spiritual healing and spiritual guidance. If there is a book you could recommend to people on uh, forgiveness or spirituality or, or being healthy, uh, through spirituality, what book would that be? You know, I, I have read and reread The Power of the Subconscious Minds by Dr. David Hawkins. So many times my book, and I actually, that's funny that you asked because I just took it out today of my bookshelf. It's, I, it's tattered. It's torn. It looks like it's 100 years old. But I reread re that probably every couple months because our mind is so powerful. Our mind can cure us. Our mind can trick us. Um, and when you, when you realize that and you realize the power is in your mind, you can create a world of your making. It's really amazing. And what happens is whatever you see in your mind repeatedly has to come to fruition. It has to. It's, it's really an amazing book. So I would suggest that one for anybody that's, that's either starting on their journey the middle of your journey or deep into your journey. If you have, it's what, a must. What was the title again? Could you repeat it for the audience? Yes. The power of the subconscious mind. And that's by David. Do Dr. David Hawkins. Great. One of the books that changed my life and made an impact was the traveler's gift by Andy Andrews. Mm. It was life changing for me. It's, it's a very uh, quick read. Um, so I, I recommend that book too. Um, okay. And what, what is that again, David? The Traveler's Gift by Andy Andrews. Okay. Yeah. And, have, and I, I love to read. I, I have learned so much just through reading. Have you heard of this book, Ikigai? No. <laughs> uh, it's an incredible book. It's the Japanese secret to a long and healthy life. So I'm finding it fascinating about halfway through. Yeah, I have not heard of that one, but I would like to read it because I know people from Japan, they're some of our healthiest individuals, especially compared to us in the United States and what we eat. So well, the people in Okinawa are part of the blue zones and, and they have longevity, you know, where they're 90, 100 years old. Some of the longest living people are, are from Okinawa. So that's since I want to focus on being healthy and living along healthy and cognitive abilities, you know physical active um, I find it you know fascinating and one of the things I've learned also is that if we're always learning we're growing as opposed to not reading and not learning absolutely and you know my dad's 83 and we take our walk I'm you know I moved down to South Carolina to be closer to him and he says darling he says the key to everything is you've got to keep moving you know so okay. he gets out hoses lawn and plants things. And, and I think he's right. I really think he's right. Whether it's moving your body or moving that mind keeps, keeps us young. That's a fantastic that he's doing so well. Um, people want to get in touch with you. What's the best way they can reach out to you? 
everything is with my name. They can find me on Facebook under Nicole S. Harvick, Instagram under Nicole Harvick. And if anyone wanted to reach out with questions, it's Nicole Harvick at gmail.com. Could you spell that for the audience also? Yes, N-I-C-O-L-E, last name Harvick, H-A-R-V-I-C-K. And yes, I'm related to Kevin Harvick, the NASCAR racer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's good to know. I wasn't aware of that. Yeah. What other advice could you give the audience about being healthy, whether it be through forgiveness or spirituality? Is there anything else that you could suggest? You know, I think the most important thing is to love yourself, to learn to love yourself, how you are, who you are. We're always so hard on ourselves. You know, we're, we're good to other people. We're kind to other people, or we should be. You know, our children come first. Um, and we're never, we never seem to love ourselves enough. We, we hold grudges against ourselves. Sometimes we'll, you know, we don't eat right because we're on the run doing something for someone else. But take time just to recognize what your body needs. Listen to your body. Look in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself and you'll really be surprised after you do it a while. You look different, you feel different, and you act different. So loving yourself is so very important. Do you use affirmations or declarations? You know, I've started using Amala. So I've got 108 beads that I work with every morning. And the one I use the most is my body is in perfect health. And I, I do it kind of in a light meditation because I, I not only want to speak the words with, which puts it out into the universe, but I want to feel that health in my body as I'm speaking those words. So yes, the affirmation of I am perfectly healthy, I say it every morning. I begin my day by saying I am grateful for what I have and what I shall receive. I find, you know, being grateful for a lot of the things we have because people don't realize how fortunate we are with the blessings that we, we have in this country. You know, that's so true. And waking up in gratitude, can you feel it within yourself when you wake up like that? Oh, absolutely. I yeah. Feel it, you know, and I, I wake up and I'm, I'm grateful for another day. Exactly. Uh, first thing I get out of bed is, hey, I made it another day, another thing to, you know, be able to, you know, give back to the world and share my knowledge and wisdom with other people. And uh, some people get up and they dread getting up in the morning. And it's like, wow, I think that's a negative attitude. What I've learned in doing research for the books that I write is that 80% uh, of our thoughts are negative. Can you imagine if we switched it and 80% of our thoughts were positive? And not only are 80% of our thoughts negative, about 90% of our thoughts are repeated day after day. Isn't 80%? That's a huge amount. That's a huge amount. And like you said, if you could flip that, what a world we'd live in. Exactly. And as you mentioned, don't beat yourself up. Everybody has that little voice saying, oh, I can be better. I should have done this different. Or it's like, forgiving yourself is using that little voice in your head people may say what little voice i don't have that little voice and well that's that little voice talking in your head absolutely absolutely and you know i just i just the way i feel about it and i tell people this is just a school for the soul it's a learning process we all do things we wish we hadn't we all wish we'd done this instead but the bottom line is learn from everything just learn and feel the difference when you start feeling with your heart, you know, which is your true center. That's where some big changes happen. That's great. Well, our time is coming to a close. What one piece of advice would you like to leave with the audience? I think the most important thing is you need, we each individual needs to realize how very important that they are. And I just think to myself, you know, what if I hadn't been here? my children wouldn't be here? Or what if you hadn't been there? You know, we, we are so important and we create a ripple with everyone we meet. So always love yourself and you are so important and just remember that. That's great. Thank you so much, Nicole, for being our guest today. I appreciate it. And above all else, I wish everybody good health. Thank you, David. Thank you for having me. 
Thanks for listening to the Stop Dieting Podcast. Remember to like and subscribe so you won't miss a single episode to get more healthy eating and lifestyle tips. Motivate and inspire others to be healthy by sharing with your friends. 